Hello everyone and welcome back to Dual Destinies, the game where we are all going to get sucked into a black hole together. What a freaking odd case this has already started to be. And you know, I think what happened was the first the first episode we had of this, I had so much information thrown at me at once. Like when they just throw you into the trial without knowing what the hell's going on, uh, it gets to be a little confusing. So I was always like, oh, he's probably lying or Blackwell's probably set him up to say something or blah, blah, blah. And then I realized as I was editing it that this dude is like major troubled. He's like showing major signs of like PTSD and I feel so bad for him. But also it's like difficult to watch a little bit, isn't it? Well, I really, I'm hoping for the best outcome possible, but right now it's not looking that great. So we've been back and forth. We're trying to figure out about all the inconsistencies that we've been talk to, talking about over the last two episodes, which there are a lot. And apparently, Mr. Starbuck has been taking medicine that he doesn't remember, but it could be that someone slipped him some drugs and that's why his testimony is all over the place. He doesn't even remember what's what's really happened. So, Objection. I wonder if we can get a little further and see what the heck's going on here. I just have so many questions. Mr. Starbuck, you can't give up hope? Yeah, really, we'll help you do- I do feel bad for him. I, I feel bad that I like called him a liar in the beginning. It, with these with these Ace Attorney things, sometimes you just can't tell if someone's just stalling or just being silly. I feel bad. Oh, yeah, Apollo. You know, Clay really looked up to you. He said you're an incredible man. He said you'd never give up your dreams and passion for space, no matter the situation. He... he said that? Aw, don't give up now. Help me prove your innocence. For the sake of the man who respected you and believed in you, Clay Terran. What do you say about that, dude? Is that good? Maybe that will help. For Clay? <sighs> You're wasting your breath. Listen, just because you don't have anyone looking up to you. Just kidding. I do. It's me. Rah! <laughs> <sighs> 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 <laughs> What's happened? Oh my gosh. Is this like the new second win that he needed? Oh, I hope so. Yeah, look at him. That's the spirit. That's a better look for you. Apollo, thank you. I can see things clearly now. <laughs> the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. Uh, except Apollo can't because one of his eyes is covered. It's fine. Mr. Starbuck. I'm... I'm fine now. Thanks for reminding me of my life's mission. No problem, dude. Wait, is that all we had to do? Ha, huh, we really should have done that at the start. Oh well. Right, we'll both be fine. I'll prove you're innocent, you'll see. And after that, we'll get you back into space. Maybe he doesn't want to go back in there after all that he's been through. I could understand. You've ignited the booster rockets of my soul. I'm on fire. This girl is on fire. I'm Solomon Starbuck, astronaut, a cosmic hero chosen by the universe itself. You got it, dude. Now you look like the guy on the movie poster. This is no time to be whimpering and crying. I can't let you and Clay down. That's a spirit. Bold Dash, listen, just because you've never been excited about anything in your life doesn't mean that other people can't have nice things. The sun, the moon, all of space is calling me. Solomon Saul Starbuck. Ready for launch! Begin the countdown! Five! Five? Five? Five! Oh, sorry, that, yeah. My husband's not gonna like that. <laughs> I'm just making fun of a meme. It's fine. Yeah, flap those arms! There he goes! Up into space. By flapping his arms. Oh, well. I feel like I've witnessed an actual rocket launch. Wait, was that a euphemism? Oh, no. Apollo, you did it. You broke Prosecutor Blackwell's grip over Mr. Starbuck. Oh, <laughs> This game, this game's gonna kill me before the end. I'm gonna like choke on something. I I'm just calling it now. I can't take the credit. It was all Mr. Starbuck. He pulled himself through. If you simpletons are done massaging one another's- e Oh, oh no! We've already had five screenshots since we've started! Oh my god! 
No matter how positive your mood, my advantage remains unshakable. I have but to wait for the final guilty verdict. Isn't that right, your boldness? Listen, don't piss on me and tell me it's raining, sir. That's what Judge Judy would say. I can't let up now. I have to stop Blackwell. I have to see this through. I need to get to an investigation day because, like, I, this, I need to know what's happening here. I feel like we're not going to know unless we get to investigate. Mr. Starbuck has just made it back into space. Oh, look at this picture. <gasps> that was lovely. I won't allow Clay's dream to remain unfulfilled. That a boy, Apollo. I've got to destroy Blackwell's argument somehow. Think, Justice, think. The only people at Launchpad 1 were Clay and Mr. Starbuck. And if Clay was already dead by the time this footage was taken, I don't know, dude, because let's be honest, has... <sighs> Think about even past Ace Attorneys. Whenever anyone's in a suit, it's never the right person. And that was one of the first things I thought of. Both their helmets are on. This could literally be any two people. And I guarantee you that's gonna come up. Then the only person who could have killed him is Mr. Starbuck. So the only way to counter Blackwell's argument is say there's someone else. If I can prove that Clay was still alive when they arrived at the boarding lounge. Oh, that too, I guess. In which case, I should be able to find some contradiction in the evidence itself. What do we have? Now, let's see. About this data that we just received. Oh, well, I mean, first of all, the the display on in the photo is wrong compared to the report. We saw that in the last one that we noticed. This supposedly proves that Mr. Starbuck dropped Clay's body in launch pad one. But if I'm going to prove that false, there must be something I can use here. They're probably showing you that to show you that the to look at the containers closely. Enough of this farce. Your boldness, let's have your verdict. Objection. We're not done here. I'm not done speaking. You sit right down. Prosecutor Blackwell, you seem to be in quite a hurry to rush the verdict. But about this oxygen tank data you submitted just now, it says that Mr. Starbucks tank had 80% remaining while Mr. Terrence had zero. Do you stand by the accuracy of this report? course. Well, then I guess it simply means that it's faulty as evidence goes. You will explain what you mean, Justice Sono. Tell him. It's simple. This evidence contradicts the facts of this case. Look here at the detailed description and you'll see what I mean. I hope you have some evidence, Mr. Justice, because I don't see what's so contradictory. Yeah, you wouldn't, would you? Oh well. Yes, Your Honor, right away. This is the evidence that the oxygen tank report stands in contradiction to. It's gotta be the photo. Because that was the only thing that showed uh, the, the oxygen tank. Uh, security camera video. If you press details on this, is this where it is? Yeah, right here. So here it is. See, it says 50. So that's gotta be it. And how does this evidence present a contradiction? Problem is this part here. Why do they make me point it out? They could have just said it's not right. I mean, honestly, it's fine. I get it. Note the remaining oxygen in Mr. Starbucks' tank as he carries Mr. Terran. You know, honestly, that could be like, what if it's the other way around? That's what I was thinking too. What if it, could it be Clay carrying Mr. Terran away? We don't know. It appears to say 50. Yes, but according to the data, our client's tank had 80% remaining. The oxygen in the tank increased? I see your honor finds it as strange as I do. It's bad enough that there's a contradiction, but the increase in oxygen is beyond illogical. Yeah, who wrote it down? Who, who faked it or who made a big, big, big mistake? Oh my, you're absolutely right. What is going on here? Silence. What are you gonna say about it? You're in trouble. I too find it odd that the oxygen remaining has increased. Sure you do. It would be as old as my rations were to increase. What's the matter? Are they not feeding you enough over there? I mean, you look pretty good. But what's proof? It doesn't change the fact that it is the defendant carrying the victim's corpse. Objection! What do you mean, though? It could actually mean what I just said. It could mean that they're reversed. I wonder if that's what Apollo's gonna go for. <laughs> I'm gonna bet you don't get more rations because you don't abide by the rules. Either way, the oxygen remaining shouldn't increase, just as your rations don't increase. 
He can't afford to buy that prison ramen. Gotta send him some money. Therefore, this new information is critical. We can't overlook it. Silence. What? I'm busy. In that case, do you have an answer to this riddle of the mysteriously increasing oxygen? You'd better not disappoint, or I'll declare the inconsistency as mere equipment malfunction. Uh, I mean, that is true. He could do that. Uh, Prosecutor Blackwell has a point. I suppose it could be a simple malfunction. Mr. Justice, if you can't provide an adequate counter-argument to the point, I'm afraid I must bring this trial to an end. So do you think you can explain why the remaining oxygen level increased? Um, I mean, what I'm thinking is... Honestly, I think I'm onto something with what I said. But w that would mean that the oxygen tanks are reversed, and what would that mean? Wouldn't that- isn't that what it would mean? I wonder if that's where the game's going. I don't know. I'm just sitting here thinking. Of course I can't. The thing to do at a time like this is to turn my thinking around. Mr. Starbuck has no memory of it, but he claims to have carried clay. He could be wrong. I mean, at this point, I think we're gonna go with that. So this man with the 50 on his tank ought to be Mr. Starbuck. But if anything, the display in his oxygen tank should have shown an 80. This is a clear contradiction between the report and the security footage. So what I should be asking is not why did the level increase, but what had to have happened to make it look like it increased? Am I making some kind of mistake in my base assumption here? No, I think you're on the right track. Well, Mr. Justice, we're waiting. Do we have it, Apollo? Yes, Your Honor. I I'm ready to answer. This is why the remaining oxygen appears to have increased. They're going the other way. The victim was carrying the defendant, or the tanks were damaged. Just simple malfunction isn't going to cut it, even though that's, that's a logical answer, too. Because there was an explosion, right? But that's not going to cut it in what we're trying to prove. They were going the other way doesn't cut it because they already said that that's where they were going to and the security camera shows it. So this is right. The victim was carrying the defendant. I'm assuming if an explosion happened around that guy when he was like that, he probably passed out immediately. For all we know. What if it was the other way around? The other way around? Uh, would you care to explain? As you can see, Your Honor, both men had their helmets on in this footage. This is a classic Ace Attorney trope. But it turns out this is where our base assumptions went astray. We assumed that it was Mr. Starbuck helping Mr. Terran, but it was the other way around. It wasn't Mr. Starbuck helping Mr. Terran at all. It was Mr. Terran who was helping Mr. Starbuck to the boarding lounge. Uh, 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 it was what? Oh yeah, it's rabble time. My favorite time. Here we go. Music and all. Order, order, Mr. Justice. You mean to tell me that the person on the right in this image is the victim, Clay Terran? It's the only way the riddle of the increasing oxygen level can be solved. At this point in time, the remaining oxygen in the victim's tank was at 50%. And when the victim was found in the boarding lounge, his tank was at zero. That's right. There's nothing contradictory about the oxygen level decreasing. That's right. It just ran out at that t by the, you know, the time that they found him. This means that Mr. Terran was alive as they made their escape to the lounge. Silence. Tch. How short your memory is. Have you forgotten what you yourself proposed? Even if the victim was alive at this point in time. How did he descend the ladder with his arms full? That I don't know. Objection. Is there a way? Prosecutor Blackwell, you can't hurt me with a broken blade. Oh shit, get him, Apollo. Excuse me? It's true that we don't know how they got down the ladder. I suppose that matter needs further investigating. But we have proven that Mr. Terran was alive when he reached the boarding lounge. This fact alone shatters your claims and opens up the possibility that the victim could have been killed by a third party. Of course, that makes sense. Oh shit, there goes your underwear. Well, too bad. I still got mine. There were two people who claimed to be there first on the scene. But can we truly trust their statements? Let's see. The two people were Detective Candace Arm and Yuri Cosmos, right? You think that one of them might have given a false statement to the police? It's very unlikely that it's the detective, but I mean, it could be. There's no reason it couldn't be, and we don't know the other person yet. 
Yes, it's certainly possible. We might have to do a little more digging. This must be what opens up the investigation. It has to. It seems we'll have to hear the testimony of these first two people on the scene. Score. Score. Come to think of it, Detective Arms should be here in court right now. If <laughs> she's not dead already. <laughs> oh, that hasn't happened yet. Don't worry. Bailiff, could you please show Detective Arm to the stand? What? Hello? Wait, is she dead? Wait, I was kidding. It's not that, is it? Oh, no. I, <laughs> it's you? Uh, what did I... What, did I give him a Daft Punk voice? Shit. It's in the same LP and I can't even fucking remember. Oh, no. I have an announcement, everyone. I think it is. Because he's, he's Robot Rock. Hello, sir. How are you? <laughs> it's good to see you again. What is the meaning of this? We're in the middle of a trial here. Please remain calm and listen carefully. Someone has reactivated the bomb. The bomb was diffused, but, 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 but. It's about to explode. Uh, explode? Oh, this is the first instance of it. Oh my god. A bomb now? Ah, oh, everyone run. Ah, uh, I don't want to die. Oh no, everyone's panicking. I mean, not Black Will. He's, <laughs> he's still standing there. He's fine. Totally fine. He's not even moving. Headless chickens with a death wish. The lot of you. Calm yourself before all else. Come on, Apollo. Let's get out of here. But what about Mr. Starbuck's dream? And who will carry out Clay's final wish? Apollo, this could be the, the distraction we needed <laughs> for another day in court. I don't care what happens to me. I'm not letting some bomb blow up the truth forever. I, I, I... Oh no, Apollo. I refuse to let things end here. Apollo, this is no time to be dramatic. If we don't get out of here now, we're gonna die. Come on, this way. Hey, ow, let me go. No, 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 we gotta get out of here, babe. Apollo. Juniper, she hasn't evacuated yet. Uh. Juniper, are you all right? Apollo, no! No, not that way! Oh, no, that's how it occurred. I see. Uh. Oh, no. Uh oh Oh, I've done it again. I've done it again. Well... <laughs> that happens. Uh, 17 minutes. We're not going to stop there. No, 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 no. No, we'll, we'll keep going. Sorry about that. Uh, no, 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 no. You never save in an active recording. We know better. In the middle of the Space Center bombing trial, we had another bombing incident. Yeah, we sure did. Oh, Jesus. This one destroyed courtroom number four. Furthermore, Apollo suffered massive injuries from being there when the bomb went off. Right. Poor guy. He did it to save Juniper, though. That was so sweet. Born a Oh, no. Don't send me the screenshot. Unfortunately, Juniper Woods was fingered as the courtroom bomber. Don't, guys. Someone's going to send it. Oh no, I'm trying to be serious here. Athena and I knew that she had to be innocent. So we took her case on, right? Okay, so so now we're, we're going forward. Right, right, we've seen all that, we've done this. We managed to clear Miss Woods' name. But Apollo sustained further injuries when he was attacked by Ted's... Right. That was when he was all bandaged up as well from before. Okay. So this is after that um, first trial that we had now. So I'm assuming that the trial that we started with for, for Clay has been put on hold until now because, um, because of what happened. All right. Apollo is a tough guy, but this is taking its toll on him. Yeah. Poor guy being attacked by Tanate like that on top of all of his other injuries. 
God, is he going to be okay? Apollo's resting at the nearby Hickfield Clinic. Oh, yeah, of course he is. I've had some experience with that place myself. Oh, gee, surely. We sure have. What an awful turn of events. I never thought he'd land in a hospital of all places. I mean, I guess that's the best place for him to be. I hope he's going to be okay. Oh, Trucy, you're right, darling. You must miss him too, huh? Now that you don't have anybody to tease. Don't worry. He's young. He'll heal quickly and be back before you know it. You are right there, girl? Oh, I don't like to see her sad. It's been a while since I last saw Trucy look so down. I mean, it's affected everybody, of course. Everyone here is like a family. We won the court case, yet nobody feels much like celebrating. No, I can see that. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> oh, all right. Enough of this, people. This is no time to be moping around. Now dry those eyes. Both of you. Ma'am, you were the one crying. Uh, you're the only one who's crying, Athena. Oh, technicalities, look. We have work to do. We have to take over. Uh, take over what exactly? Apollo Space Center case, of course. As no verdict's been reached, there's still a chance. That's what I thought, so it's probably been on hold this whole time. I agree with Athena. We should pick up Mr. Starbuck's defense. We have to avenge our fallen comrade. Right, Daddy? Apollo hasn't exactly fallen. He's still alive, but he's in the hospital. Like, if they want to start doing this within the next few days, he's not going to be able to do it, is he? Surely not. Good. Now that that's settled, let's get going. Come on, we gotta run. Okay, Sonic, hang in there. Wait, wait, right, right now? You better not be running the whole way. There she goes. I better go catch up. Oh, can you take care of the office, Trucy? Yeah, sure thing, Daddy. Let's be careful out there. In the meantime, I'm gonna bake some cookies and fill up my magic panties for you. Don't. I do, no, I do not accept. I don't accept the loose of Trucy. Or Pearl, we have standards here. We don't do these things. <laughs> Everyone else is fine. Trucy seems to be feeling a little better. I can always count on Athena to perk everybody up with her enthusiasm. She's great. Oh, she's back. What happened? Did you miss me? Don't mind me. I just forgot a few things. Wallet, phone, the documents, my bag. <coughs> Ma'am, that's everything. Sounds more like you forgot everything. I can always count on Athena for that, too. Me. That is so big me. All right, you two. Let's be careful out there. Okay. We're going to do it. We're going to investigate with Phoenix and Athena. That's fantastic. All right, I'm assuming that Saul is here for the meantime. So our client is one Solomon Starbuck. He's so famous. Even I've heard of him. Well, I mean, I'm, wasn't he on the poster in the, the movie? I'm sure everyone's heard of him because of that. That's right. He's a super famous astronaut who works at the Cosmos Space Center. He was actually up in outer space seven years ago. So yeah, it was a while, but it went really bad. <laughs> you seem to know quite a bit about him. Now I'm excited to meet the man. That a boy, Phoenix. That's great. Is he going to be okay? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, he's not. Oh, he's not okay anymore. He's back to the way he was before. Oh, dear. <sighs> Wow, that was the longest sigh I've ever heard. You are right there, dude. You're not okay. Apollo told me all about you. You're Phoenix Wright. Apollo's mentor, right? Yes, that's right. Oh, mentor has a nice ring to it. Sure does, doesn't it? Hey, if you're in Final Fantasy, you get to wear the Burger King crown. Don't worry about a thing, Mr. Starbuck. Mr. Wright and I have you covered. Oh, and you're... You're the new kid that Apollo told me about. Wait, don't I know you from somewhere? Huh? Well, you mean other than at your trial? I don't think so. I guess so. My mistake. What's that about? Uh oh. <sighs> My memory isn't what it used to be. Oh, it could still be from that as well. I mean, it's only been a couple of days, right? My mind and body are kaput. Same goes for my life. <laughs> wow. If this isn't a mood. Holy, holy shit. I mean, I'm so astronomically unlucky that I had a bomb go off in the middle of my trial. 
Trying to defend me would be like trying to enter the stratosphere without a spacecraft. Whoa. He's seriously gotta stop depressing himself. Yeah, we gotta help him. What are we gonna do? Cheer up, Mr. Starbuck. Besides, that thing you said about entering the stratosphere? That just means that we'd shine like shooting stars, right? Like shooting stars, huh? You know, you're right. Why didn't I think of that? After all, that's what we were all put on this earth to do, right? To shine like stars. There you go. Guess I shouldn't mention the fact that shooting stars burn out in a flash. Whoa, let's not bring that up. Oh yeah, here we go. Three, two, one, to the stratosphere and beyond. Are you swimming through space, dude? What are you doing? Yeah, I feel alive now. You can go ahead and ask me anything you want. Oh, thank God for that. Is that really all it takes? Listen, sometimes you just need a little pick-me-up. It's not a big deal. All right, first things first, because this is important. Look at this badge. So what do you think about this? <gasps> That's probably what everyone thinks when I show it to them, to be fair. The evidence is going to get me convicted. No, 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 it's my attorney's badge. I was hoping it would reassure you that we're here to defend you. Evidence isn't just for the prosecution. It can help prove a person's innocence, too. <laughs> That's a positive spin on things. I thought that was common knowledge. Oh. Well, I guess not. Uh, let's see. Uh, boop. The case. Let's figure it out. So, you have no memory at all of the incident? <sighs> oh, man, I'm so ashamed. My memory at the time is as black and clouded as a dark nebula. Still, it's strange you don't remember a thing. Are you sure you didn't take one of those anti-anxiety pills like they said at the trial? He was saying that he doesn't remember taking them. Yeah, he doesn't remember it. I never took any medication, I swear! He seemed to be truthfully freaking out about it. It is true I developed a fear of space because of what happened seven years ago. And I was taking medication secretly every now and then, when my anxiety got bad. Having a fear of space is not something an astronaut can brag about, you know? I get it. That sucks. Oh, the so-called Hat One Miracle. That must have been a terrifying experience. But I'm still an astronaut at heart, come what may. I would never take drugs that might impede my performance just before a launch. I believe him. That launch meant everything to me. That's more certain than the theory of relativity. He seems like a completely different person now. This is the face of the astronaut I know. Okay. But the tranquilizers were found in your system. <sighs> yeah. See, that's the thing. But I don't know why. I I'm done for it. They must have given him a heck of a lot, too, to have it still in the system, like, days later. If you didn't take them, then maybe someone slipped them to you? Exactly. That's what I thought. It must have been the real culprit. My medication was in my locker. Anyone could have gotten their hands on it. Wait a minute, you guys don't lock your lockers with, like, <laughs> combination locks or something? In NASA? Well, the equivalent of... What? That seems stupid. Maybe the real culprit also planted the detonator switch in your pocket. That could have also happened, especially if he was the one that pa that was passed out, being carried, and they flopped together. It could, it could have happened by the third party. Yeah, that's gotta be it. I've been framed. I'll say. They even managed to plant your prints on the switch before slipping it in. <laughs> oh, don't. It's a real possibility. Do you remember anything else that might be relevant? Anything at all, no matter how small. Like about the murder weapon, for example. Oh, that knife. I, I think it came from one of the Space Center's utility kits. Utility kits? Yeah. Staff who work on machinery a lot are given these special tool kits to use. All the technicians have them, so I doubt you could prove whose knife it is. But you guys don't have them, right? It's only the technicians that do? That could be a clue. Utility knife updated. It has the victim's blood on it from a set of utility tools used by a Space Center tech. Okay. Okay. The Hat One Miracle. Tell me about that. As I recall, your last trip into space was seven years ago, right? That's right. It was oh, a pretty rough experience. During that mission, we had all kinds of problems with the craft. 
You did? What kind of problems? Power failure, oxygen leakage, busted radio, cracked windows, loose control. Uh, it sounds like they were setting you up. What in the world? How did none of that pass, like, a quality check? The heat shield came off as we were entering the atmosphere. Oh, well, re on, re on re-entry. Yeah, I could see, but still, that shouldn't happen. But I managed to make it somehow with the popsicles and ice packs from the freezer. God, where'd you stick those? You know what? Let's not ask questions. We don't want the answers to. No wonder they dubbed it the Hat One Miracle. It's a miracle you came in back. That must be why he's so traumatized. Space is a boundless place. That's why it continues to capture people's imaginations. But the vastness of space shows us how insignificant we are in the scheme of things. The darkness just goes on and on forever and ever and ever without end. Uh... Oh, there was nobody else there. Nobody was gonna come save me. You were up there by yourself? What is this, Farscape? Did you get sucked into a black hole and then meet a bunch of hens and aliens? Who sends someone up by themselves for such an important mission? Well, they never, do. who would do that? All alone with nothing to listen to but the sound of my own breathing. They didn't even give you a good radio. Oh my god, he said the radio was broken, but he might have meant like the, you know, the call radio to the, like the space station. I kept scrambling to make repairs, but I couldn't keep my hands from shaking. Oh no, this is terrifying. The breathing and stuff, oh, I don't like that. An experience like that would make anyone afraid to go up into space. True. Outer space, tell me about that. With the experience you had, weren't you dreading this mission? What? No way. Uh, of course not. Even now I want to go up into space so bad I can barely stand it. I want to shake off the Earth's gravity and escape velocity and spin around weightless. But you have to admit it was pretty harrowing. Weren't you even a tiny bit afraid? Were you? I was afraid. Of course I was. Still am. But space is a man's final frontier. An unknown world. The cosmic truth is out there waiting for us somewhere. The cosmic truth, huh? I, I guess there are people looking for the truth in every walk of life. That's true. No matter how afraid I am, I'm sure I can manage. If I give in to my fear, I'll never find the truth. As long as I don't give up, I can keep up the fight. One thing's for sure, Mr. Starbuck's passion for space is undeniably the real deal. Sure is. The victim, tell me about Clay. The victim, Clay Terran, he was kind of like your protege, wasn't he? Well, it wasn't a big exaggerated deal like Master and Apprentice or anything like that. But Clay did think of me as his mentor. The mentor and the protege. What a combination they must have been. Yeah, I know. <sighs> With his encouragement, I knew I could get over my fear and go back into space. But now... Clay must have been very encouraging, huh? Yeah, it's funny, really. Whenever I'd hear him shout, You're fine! Oh, that's Apollo's line. I always got the feeling everything really was gonna be fine. You're fine? Apollo says I'm fine, and you're fine all the time, too. And I always feel encouraged, too, whenever I hear him shout it. Yeah, Clay and Apollo were best buds. They used to come visit the Space Center a lot, ever since they were high school kids. That's so cute! One day, out of the blue, Clay even told me he wanted to be my protege. Those two hung around the Space Center so much, they were like a part of the staff. One time during Zero-G training, I started to panic a little. And the two of them took turns shouting, You're fine! over the radio. That's so cute! It was a simple thing, but it was exactly what I needed to hear. So I'm fine and you're fine were like Apollo and Clay's secret phrase. Oh my gosh, that's so, oh! That's so heartwarming. I wish I could ask Apollo more about Clay and their relationship now. Probably can't do that for a hot minute. Speaking of Clay... How do you suppose he climbed down the ladder with you over his shoulder? <sighs> Sorry, but I can't even begin to imagine. But he actually did climb down that ladder, so 
a way had to have existed. Yeah, I wonder what it was, though. <sighs> From the freedom of space to the walls of a cell. But that prosecutor said the dark night sky isn't half bad through barred windows. What's wrong, Athena? You're fine. Solomon Saul Starbuck is fine. Everything is gonna be all right. Huh? And Athena Sykes is fine. Come on, Mr. Wright, you too. Do I really have to? Come on, Phoenix, it's all right. Phoenix Wright is fine. I can't hear you. Phoenix Wright is fine. We'll get you back into space yet, Mr. Starbuck. Believe in your own innocence and have faith in us. Oh, Athena, Athena's so good. She's so good. Apollo believed in you wholeheartedly and that's good enough for me. I believe in you too. Oh, look, dude, it's gonna be okay. Thank you, thank you both of you. I'll put my faith in you. And I vow to make it back into space. All I need first is a not guilty verdict. It sure feels nice to reassure ourselves every now and then that we're all fine. Sure does. Man, I should start saying it. Okay, Mr. Wright. Let's get our investigation of the Space Center started, pronto. Good idea, let's go. All right. Well, we're going to do that, I think, in the next one. Pog, I was really hoping for some investigation. Let's go. I want to see everything and write down everything. I'm ready to do this. Guys, this is getting really exciting now. Oh, man. I'm jazzed. We're going to do this. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope that you're enjoying it as much as I am. And I will see you soon in the next episode. Toodaloo.